All right, this evening for Tech 10, Jim Jupin has been working on a really neat project. How many of you own a SCR Play? Quite a few. And you're probably aware of the uh, Spectrum Analyzer software for free. So Jim has been working with that. He grabbed some club repeaters and he built his own signal generator. And so this evening Jim will just kind of give us a 10,000 foot view of the SDR Play Spectrum Analyzer and some testing that he's done with the club uh, filters. Jim? Okay. Uh, those of you that were here when we did our, did our little show and tell last spring, I brought basically the beginning of this project. And uh, what it is, is a spectrum analyzer that goes from about 100K to 2 gig. It's free software. It's developed by a gentleman in Australia. He does an excellent job. He's a great supporter of the software. This is beta 2 release. What I had last spring was beta 1. This is beta 2. It has some really nice features and it's been debugged for some of the problems that he was having with the initial run. So I call this a poor man's spectrum analyzer. It's uh, one of those devices that if you already own the SDR, an RPS 1 or 2, you've got 90% of the cost covered right there with what you've got and a PC. And I assume most of us have PCs of one type. So let's see if this will work for me. Okay, starting out, here's what we've got. Got the SDR satellite, or excuse me, uh, software-defined radio, and it's feeding directly into my laptop PC over there. That's how you kind of start the project. And then you configure, and it's very easy, it's very intuitive, on configuring that software to work with your laptop. It's almost bulletproof at this point. It's, it's been really easy to work with. Uh, I want to give credit to Andrew Developments. He's the gentleman that does this. I have emailed him a couple of times, and he's in Australia, and within 24 hours, I get a response on his forum on you know what concerns I have or what situations I'm, I'm running into. He's extremely good on doing this. Uh, this may be a little bit tough to see with the lights on there. Kill those lights. Good, thank you. This is the software, and what you see is basically, this is the floor in my shack. That is going from 4.5 to 9.5 megacycles, megahertz. And I wanted to do that because I wanted to cover the 40 meter band. So this is just the noise that the SDR was picking up with no input of any kind in, in my shack. And I'll explain a little bit later why that's kind of important. Okay, this is the same image no input, but this has been integrated over several minutes. That first shot was right now, it was a snapshot. This is sitting there for minutes in my shack, picking up noise, whatever. I've got computers going on, I've got you know HF, VHF, whatever. So this is just the background floor, and I know it's a little tough to see, but that's at 100 and minus 130. That's pretty far down. Uh, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take a tracking generator that I built on the little board over there, and we're going to feed that through a bird attenuator. The output of the tracking generator is about 350 millivolts. You do not want to feed that into the front end of your software-defined radio. You'll blow it right out. So you take it down. I took it down to about a minus 70. That's where I wanted to be. Uh, the uh, SDRs can handle from zero for a few minutes, they really like to see a minus 10 as a maximum input signal. So you just have to protect your device by doing that. So there, that's the setup. And then there's the feedback between the SDR and the generator itself. Um, the tracking generator is on the little board. I'll show it to you in a minute. It's an uh, Arduino 2560 mega. And it's running two analog uh, devices. There are chips, 9850s, 9851s. Those are DDSs. A DDS is a, a digital synthesizer. It produces a sine wave out and a square wave out. It's very flexible. Uh, tonight I'm using the 9851 that can go to 90 megahertz. So it can go from like zero to 90 megahertz. And it can sweep that frequency at whatever rate you want to sweep it. So it's a pretty powerful little chip. It costs you about 14 bucks for the board. This is what the board looks like. The Arduino is over on the right hand side. Um, you can see the two chips, the 9850 down at the bottom, right there. 
There's the 9851, the one I'm currently using the, tonight. I've got two little 5 volt power supplies so I can run both chips at the same time. I'm going to use just this one tonight, running this 9851 with that Arduino, and those are the outputs. I have a sine wave out, a square wave out, sine wave out, and second chip, square wave out, and then I have a uh, sync pulse I can use for other things. So I built this with stuff. I uh, got this stuff from China mostly. A lot of the hardware came from Fry's, which I'm sad to say is probably not even going on right anymore. Last time I was in there, they were hauling shelves out like crazy. So big Fry's and Red Bulls are pretty much a dead store. But anyway, they carry these little boards and so on for a while. Okay. This is the spot frequency mode of that chip. I said, go to seven megacycles, give me a sine wave at seven meg. And this is what it produced. And on the scope, you can see that it's pretty darn close to seven megacycles. Not bad for a $14 chip. So that's basically the sine wave output. And you'll notice it's about 350, 350 millivolts. So that's a pretty good output from a chip that's got that kind of range of up to 90 meg that it can deal with. Next picture is going to be a little more interesting. Okay, now what, wait for it. That's the scan, that's the tracking mode, and I've got it going very slowly. So I said, hey, let's go from 4.5 to 9.5, and I want you to do it over a certain period of time. You could control all of that. Okay, this is the output of the tracking generator straight into the software with nothing in between but cables, no filters, no nothing. And you'll notice what I've got going here is I've got the output at about a minus 73 there, and it goes across, I'm sweeping from 4.5 to 9.5, it goes to about a minus 71. So the output of that little tracking generator is flat within 2 dB over that range, which is not bad considering it's just wires hanging all over everywhere. Okay, now we're going to do something with this. We've got a tracking signal. We can control what the lower end is, what the upper end is, what good is it. Hey, let's feed it through a filter. The club bought bandpass filters to be used for field day several years ago. So I took one of the uh, 7 megahertz, 40 meter filters and said, let me stick that in between these two and see what it does. So this is how I did it. I have the tracking generator. I'm going into our little bandpass filter. Still attenuating the signal into the SDR into the laptop. So that's the uh, that's the hookup. In it. That's the results. If you look at what we're doing is, this is the insertion loss here. That bandpass filter is less than 1 dB costing us to go in because it's centered on 7 meg. Okay, at 7 meg I got a value there of minus 71.8. I said let's go 20 dB down. There we are at 5.89, we're 20 dB down. And if you go way down here, you can look that we are way off, and we're still in the four and a half meg range. So that bandpass filter is keeping our energy at seven megacycles, 40 meters, from getting into the next hand band down quite a bit, very effectively. On the high end, you notice there's again this our reference point. I'm going down here, and it, the skirt is not quite as steep, but it does look like. You know, that tails off fast. This is tailing off a little bit slower, but still at nine and a half meg, we are way down. So we're not going to get into 20 meters with this bandpass floor, which is what it's supposed to do for us. So, and this is a scan that's built up and it's actually happening right over there. That's the whole setup active right now. So it, the buildup of the response is done by integrating the video. So what's happening is, where you see these little glitches in the bottom and all this little nonsense here, that's just an artifact of the fact that this is taking screen grabs and laying them one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. You can go to a raw scan mode, scan it very quickly, or we can go to this peak mode that does this integration for you. Again, you have handles on all of this stuff. You can change the colors, those markers that I showed you, you can put four of them on the signal anywhere you want to go. Not only can you do that, you can make them track. You can say, hey, you know what? I want them to move up and down or, or chase something, and they'll do that too. And they do it all in colors. It's, it's pretty slick stuff. Okay, that's it for a quick tech 10. Free software. If you own the SDR, you're 80% of the way there. And uh, boy, for a beta version, it works beautifully. And it's all running there. If you want to change the filters to like a 
14 meg filter, we can do that. If you want to go straight, you can do that. You're welcome to play with it. I don't think you can hurt it at all. Yeah. <laughs>